The sources I'm putting on this screen should be in your database in the form of categories. Every database has a place for you to put, cat put people in categories. People could be in every category. For example, it could be a fast fire and seller that's also a hot prospect. You with me? It could be somebody that's a fast fire and seller that's a listing prospect. So people could be in different categories. I'm going to go through the categories and mention just a couple of things about them, but I don't want this class to be a prospecting class. But I realize that part of a business plan is you determining what sources of business am I going to use next year. So here are some one raving fans. Raving fans, typically people who have bought a house from you within the past year, have listed a house with you in the past year, or who have given you a referral. That's what Ronald Reagan had 420 of. These are the best people you have. Most real estate agents have less than 100. <clears throat> if you had 25 or 30 of these people, you're, you, you have unlimited potential. Without 25 or 30 of them, you struggle. You do every deal yourself. By having them in a database, it gives you a chance to identify them and contact them. Uh, that's the sphere of influence. How many of you remember the days when you all, when you so when you created the sphere of influence? How many of you have one now? Let me see your hands. You know what? I never saw anybody on my sphere of influence house on that. I I put it two or three times. I hate it. These were people though who gave me the referrals. <clears throat> they didn't buy myself from me, but they told other people about me. And now sphere of influence is phenomenal. Facebook makes sphere of influence just a wonderful way. Because on Facebook, you do things on Facebook that people all over the world know about. I mean, the, the, uh, the, the reach is unlimited. The same thing with sending out emails. Nobody ever sent me a postcard that was a recent card, meaning they put my name label off of a card they got and a new stamp on it and sent it to me. It doesn't happen. Every day I forward stuff to people. It dies. When you send, put something in a mailbox, it dies right there. When you send, put something on the internet, it goes everywhere. The sphere of influence has been a big issue. But sphere of influence doesn't work like the negatives. That's not where the sales and listings are. The sales and listings are sphere of influence are the next level up. It's the people they know. But people in the sphere of influence don't have any contacts, don't have any connections, you die with it. That's the reason why people say, you know, I've done everything right in a big database right here. They're designing that. You don't have any advocates in that. You have lots of names and addresses, no advocates. Uh, next, open up visitors. Probably the best part of your database. This is where the buyers are. You want to start all over again? Go to open house. Don't go to old open houses, go to new open houses, but it's not open house. You don't have to go on Sunday afternoon from 1 to 4 and everybody else will go to Russell all the time. Go Saturday. Internet shoppers shop all the time. They ride through subdivisions in the middle of the week, they ride through them on a the weekend. But open house visitors, these are people that come to open house in January and buy in June. I mean, this is something you can't get out of the habit of. I don't care where you're selling or what you're selling. Our next pass, buyers and sellers, an absolute gold mine. But you know what? Past buyers and sellers only give you referrals one time. I tell you when they give you referrals. When they sign a contract to buy, or they sign a contract for this, from then for the next four months, they'll give you referrals. After that, they won't know your name. So why do you stay in touch with them to sell them every five years? So you sell them now, you sell them five years from now. So how do you stay in touch? You contact them once a month, all email. You don't have email addresses, it's direct mail. So you say, how much does it cost? So suppose you do postcards, it's a dollar a card. Send them 12 cards a year, that's $12 a year. Five years, $60. At the end of five years, you get a $4,000 commission. Would you risk 60 bucks to make a $4,000 commission? Yes or no? Yeah. If you say no, you're in the wrong business. The odds don't get any better than that. And there are people in this room that are sick about it because they don't have a list of them and they haven't stayed in touch Go pick them up now. They're wondering what I can do. But people leave your office, take their past buyers and sellers and treat them like they're your own. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not unethical. It's not illegal. There's nothing wrong with it. I mean, then, that's current buyers and sellers. These are people that you have as prospects right now. 
that have signed a contract to buy or have signed a contract to sell. The best referral sources ever, right there. Those 12, I'm I didn't believe it, and I went back and I looked at a year's worth of business, and half of the business I did came from these people. Because I had a system, I did not know how to work, but I had it. I would give them business cards after they signed the contract, and I said, if you want anybody to come to buy my son, please, I appreciate if you hand me my card. And I was handing it to the best people there were. Current buyers and sellers. And that's first on buyers. The biggest, uh, the biggest group of buyers we have are those. And I know you're waiting for me to say something about sellers in a buyer's market. Think about it now. Think about it. I agree that you have to have listings with signs on it and the market and to do all of that so people know you're in business. But having a buyer in the car is instant money. If they can't buy in this market, they can't buy in any market. I mean, think about it. 4% interest and a bazillion houses for sale. Well, how much more do you want? So if you want money now, work on buyers. I would spend more time working at the buyer level than I would work at seller level if I wanted money now, which I've always wanted money now. First time home buyers, how easy could it be? If you're not forming the apartment complexes, 100 or 150 of those people, you really need to think about it because that's where they live. Are they still buying? They are still half of the market as first time home buyers. The average price house they buy is 250 to 300. They're still there, they're still buying. Don't miss out on that one. Online shoppers. I mean, three years ago, we got all upset when the statistic came out and it said 90% of the people who were less than 45 years of age went to the internet to look, at, to look for a house before they bought. <coughs> 90% of the people, 45 years or 44 years of age, told us went to the internet. My goodness. People started changing the way they work. Now it's 90%, not a 44 or less. It's everybody. So to have a website, without a website, I don't care what you want stretch to make it go. As a matter of fact, put that stuff down. I want you to stand up. I want you to stand up. I want you to get a business card out. <coughs> Get a business card. Let's do a little test here. Let's see where we are. This a little fun thing. Okay. I see you digging around with those business cards. How bad could it be? You walk out of here and there's somebody out in the road and they see you got a sign on, Roy Wheeler, Realty, the best there is, and they say, hey, we're here looking for how she got business card. Have <laughs> <laughs> we had an album? How embarrassing could it be? Would you lose your house with somebody that doesn't have a stinking business card? Okay, if you have a business card, hold it up in the air while I can see it. Okay, if you don't have a business card, you can have a seat. If you don't have a business card, you can have a seat. Oh, my. Oh, my. The good thing they were thrown in this class. But I like know what, if most people don't have your business card, they're not going to call you. I know the ones of you who have business cards, you think that you're superior to the rest of them. If you have a name tag on, you can continue standing. If you don't have a name tag on, you see you later. <laughs> now look at where we are. Now look at where we are, okay? We've got to go one more. Look, we've got to put over half the class here. We've got to go one more step. If you don't have any identification on your car or brochure boxes on your sign, I want you to have a seat. <coughs> These are people that have brochure boxes on their signs or they have something on their car. Think about it. 463 people a day see your car. You don't have to put something like I had on my car. I mean, I had when I first Continental State, I had a great big long white Lincoln Continental with the logo painted on the door and Leroy written backwards on the front. <laughs> I got the emergency crew behind me. Leave your suit for every day of the week. I tell you what, I, I didn't always look like this. I was a hot guy. <laughs> I wasn't always like this. 